Hello and welcome to another video and today is going to be a good one because I'm meeting slash hanging slash training slash eating with my brother, the youngest of my brothers, I actually have two brothers and a sister, for the sibling fans out there, um, his name is Ben, he's been in videos previously, he was actually in a video where we trained together like I think six months or so ago, um, but basically he's just finished uni so he's now moved down like near where I am, he's like half an hour from where I am so uh, it means we can hang and train a bit more frequently which means we'll be in more videos from this point going forwards, um, but I thought it would be interesting for two reasons, firstly because like I just think it's interesting seeing people's brothers and sisters, like I find particularly if someone trains and they're in good shape it's interesting to see like what their siblings look like just you know out of interest um, and it's also um, I thought it would be very interesting from a genetic standpoint because Genetics is something I talk about all the time. I'm kind of forced to talk about it because um, I think I have decent genetics basically. Like I have a different lifestyle from a lot of other fitness YouTubers in the sense that like I don't take training mega seriously. Um, I frequently will miss periods of training and I eat like quite a lot of crap relative to other fitness YouTubers again. Um, and when people ask me how I can do that, like how I can eat the crap I eat and still stay lean, um, a lot of the time the answer I'll give, I'll give is genetics, like it's not really a satisfying answer but it's the truth, like genetics play a huge role in your physique, um, particularly uh, for me in the sense that I have very fast metabolism, that is hereditary, um, that means that like it's a, I've inherited it and so my siblings have a similar thing whereby we can all eat a lot of food but not put on that much body fat plus I don't deposit body fat on my stomach which again my siblings share the trait with me so <laughs> I figured it would be interesting for you to see my brother because he obviously shares my genetics or fingers crossed unless he's adopted which I don't think he is um, yeah and so he I mean bear in mind his lifestyle is probably worse than mine in the sense that he's been a student for the last three years um, so <clears throat> I mean, he does, you know, he trains relatively seriously, but he's only been doing it basically seriously since he started uni, so he's been training, I guess, for three years, but within that time, there's been periods where he hasn't trained, you know, any more than, say, twice a week, um, plus, obviously, not so much now, but before, particularly in his first couple of years, he was going out drinking fairly frequently, so in terms of sleep as well, he hasn't been living an optimal lifestyle as far as uh, training goes, but his physique is decent, obviously, you'll see that soon, but I think it's interesting to show you another example of basically how genetics can overcome certain factors that wouldn't be optimal as far as like muscle growth goes because basically there are other people that probably train you know better than me or more seriously than me eat a better diet than me get more sleep than me but don't have the physique that I have and ultimately that comes down to genetics so this will be a good example of that so yeah the plan is I will talk to you briefly about the importance of genetics when it comes to your physique more importantly I'll tell you how you can overcome poor genetics in particular areas and then I'll pick my brother up we'll uh, hang we'll train we'll get some food should be a good video so if you are excited drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let's go. Okay, we're eating. So genetics, how do they impact your physique? How do they limit your physique? And how can you get around or overcome the genetic limitations? Now, genetic limitation one is gonna be your muscle insertions, and in some cases, your tendon length. Okay, so a good example of this will be your abs. Like, everyone knows someone that has those perfectly symmetrical abs, whereas most people, like myself included, will have slightly kind of asymmetric abs. Okay, so they have one that's like slightly above the other. That's very, very common. Now, that, that just comes down to where those abs insert on your body, okay? Same thing when it comes to like tendon lengths, good like your, your bicep right if you have a really long bicep tendon your bicep may not start until it gets up to here okay again that just comes down to where your bicep inserts it's not a great deal you can do about that now in terms of overcoming uh, muscle insertions and so muscle shapes like I said in some aspects there's nothing you can do about it aside from like surgical intervention what you can do is still develop those muscles like if your abs are not quite symmetrical you can still train your abs you can still drop your body fat to make them visible they're still going to look sick like if your bicep starts a little bit higher you can still properly train your bicep get massive biceps your arms are still going to look sick genetic limitation number two is going to be your bone structure right so your skeleton now the way this can negatively impact your physique uh, good examples would be like if you're born with wide hips or you're born with narrow shoulders shoulders or you're born with like a really long uh, really long humerus bones or really long femurs um, that's gonna make developing like a great physique harder um, but in terms of overcoming it it's still not impossible you can still develop the physique you want you're just gonna have to work harder and work around it so good examples would be if you have those narrow shoulders then train your side delts right if you train your lateral the lateral head of your deltoid um, it's gonna give you that wider look so do things like lateral dumbbell raises if you have um, 
Again, wider hips, then train your lats, get a bigger lats, and that's still gonna give you somewhat of a V taper. If you have really long humerus bones or really long femurs, it's gonna be harder for you to get massive thick quads and massive thick arms, but you can still do it just by training more and being in a calorie surplus. If you have long arms as well, play to your strengths, right? So things like deadlift, you're gonna be sick at because you've got long arms. So just try and view it from like a glass half full perspective. Genetic limitation number three is gonna be the amount of muscle mass you can build and the time it takes you to do so, okay? So everyone has the ability to build different amounts of muscle over different time frames and everyone can do it like at different speeds okay so everyone knows someone that puts on muscle really easily and everyone knows someone that trains really hard and finds it hard to build muscle right that comes down to you know there are things you can you can affect like your diet and stuff but a lot of that comes down to things like your natural uh, level of certain hormones right but you can still impact that right if, if it's harder for you to build muscle it doesn't mean you freaking cry about it right you just train harder it may take longer for you to do it but you can still do it your friend might build muscle like that would take you a year, they might do it in a few months. But if you train for that year, you're still gonna to get to that level. It just means you've got to work a bit harder. But ultimately, that's kind of you know, even more rewarding because you've worked harder to get to that point. If you find it hard to build muscle then, you can also spend more time in a calorie surplus, right? So you might put on a little bit more body fat, but you're still gonna build the muscle you want and it's not gonna take freaking years. What's also important is to train your weaknesses. Some people, um, spend too much time training their strength. So for example, if they have a really strong back, because they can lift loads of weight, they find it fun, and they end up spending all of their time training back, right? If you have a smaller chest, train your chest, right? Focus on your weaknesses, focus on the smaller muscle groups you have, and eventually over time, you'll level things out and you'll have a better all-round physique. Genetic limitation number four is gonna be your metabolism, right? So how many calories you burn. Now the reason this impacts your physique and can impact it in a negative way is that if your metabolism is slow, it means that if you wanna bulk and build some muscle, you're gonna find it very hard not to put on a pretty serious amount of fat that's obviously gonna have a negative effect on your physique right everyone knows someone that can eat loads of food and not really gain any fat and everyone also knows someone that claims not to eat very much food but puts on quite a lot of fat okay now although your metabolism is pretty significantly affected by your daily activity it's also pretty significantly significantly affected by your genetics right so you genetically inherit a metabolism it may be good it may it may suck but you can alter this through what you do so a good way to alter it will be to build more muscle Right? The more muscle mass you have on your frame, the more energy your body needs to maintain that, and therefore the more calories you're gonna burn, the higher your metabolism is gonna be. You can also reverse diet, right? So if you find you're at a point where you're not eating too much food, but you're still gaining fat, I would say your metabolism sucks, therefore you need to reverse diet. What you need to do is start tracking your calories, and then every week, just add, say, 50 to 100 calories to what you're eating, and what will happen is, because you're only adding calories at a very slow rate, your body will adapt to that, so you won't put on any fat, you'll kind of stay where you are but six months down the line you're going to be eating another 500 or 1000 calories a day and you won't be gaining fat at that point your metabolism is now faster and it's going to make it a lot easier for you to either build muscle without gaining too much fat or drop fat and look shredded and the fifth and final genetic limitation is going to be your fat distribution so where you deposit fat on your body now i've talked about this loads in the past as have loads of other people incorrectly in a lot of cases but basically where you put fat on your body is genetic it's hereditary you get it from your parents right so if you put loads of fat in your stomach blame your stupid friggin parents now although in some cases it does suck like I know some people that have relatively low body fat but don't have visible abs because they put all of their fat on their stomach and other people like myself put fat on like my legs or my lower back so I can have a relatively high body fat and still have visible abs now again although it sucks if you're in that uh, former category you can still get visible abs by dropping your body fat lower. So it goes back to you know the guy that builds muscle faster than you do. Although it's frustrating and it sucks, you can still build muscle, it just takes longer, right? If you wanna get visible abs and you put all your body fat on your stomach, it just means you're gonna have, you're gonna have to get your body fat that much lower to get visible abs, right? If you wanna get like a sh shredded shoulders and you put more body fat on your shoulders, you can still achieve that. You're just gonna have to get your body fat lower than the average person would to get that same outcome. And that is that as far as genetic limitations go. I know on the surface it probably sounds quite depressing and some of you are probably now crying because you're thinking I'm never gonna get those wide shoulders or that uh, shredded six pack look that I want. But I'm just trying to instill a sense of like realism here. I think it's better if you're a bit bummed out in the short term and but you're then motivated to go and hit your goals rather than like you spend five years being super motivated to go and do something and then you realize that after those five years that it's never gonna happen. Like I think the problem is that some people or a lot of people look up to like 
fitness people, so people on Instagram or on YouTube that have sick physiques, um, and they'll see that as like a, as a realistic target. I'm afraid the bad news is that in almost every case they have sick genetics. Like if someone is putting their physique out there, they probably look good, and they probably look good because they have good genetics, or they're on drugs, right? But either of those things are gonna be unattainable to that extent. Again, you can still relatively develop a good physique and um, something you're happy with, but you may never be able to attain the physique that someone on Instagram that looks incredible has, right? Because they have better genetics than you, okay? The best thing to do, and I always say this, is to just try, it sounds so corny, try and compete against yourself, right? Look at your physique and try and beat it. Look at how strong you are and try and beat it. In six months time, if you look better than you did six months ago, brilliant, you've hit that goal, then go again and try and beat what you've done previously, right? Or find someone you know that has similar genetics to yourself and compete against them. But don't set yourself unrealistic targets. Don't try and look as good as your favorite fitness Instagrammer does because the chances are they have better genetics than you, probably vastly better genetics than you, and therefore, or what they can achieve for a couple of years of training, you won't be able to. Damn it, that still sounded depressing, all right? Just train really hard, have a sick time, and don't worry about it. Anyway, I need to go and find Ben. I've got a feeling somewhere around here. Hey, bro. Yeah. Made it. So we're in Pure Gym, AKA the greatest gym in a one mile radius of our current location. You agree? There's a massive light behind your head, mate. Let's move around. There's lights everywhere. What the hell? There's lights everywhere. And there's danger everywhere. We've walked like a 10 meter span. And we've seen about 4,000 rules and regulations for the gym. Um, okay, what's the plan, Ben? I mean, we both know the plan, but let's just pretend we're like discussing it now. What's the plan for the session? Big, big push session. That's correct. And then eat some food. That is correct as well. So we're gonna do a chest focused push workout. You with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I typically do push work, two push workouts a week. The first one is more chest focused. The second one is more shoulder focused. Today is chest focused, so it's probably gonna be four chest exercises, two shoulder exercises, two tricep exercises, and then 17 glute exercises. Sweet. But you, I won't do that, but you just yeah. love it. Okay, Double down. sick. Right, <laughs> double down, you're absolute pervert. Let's train. We're in, so the plan is, uh, we're gonna start with flat bench press. Now what I typically do is the first move of the session will be a heavier kind of strength focused move. So in this case, bench press. From that point on, everything else will be hypertrophy, um, loads of reps, get freaking massive, right? Let's begin. By the way, these benches are literally like an ice rink. So if you love sliding around, like an absolute weirdo, then get to your gym. Also, sit soundtrack.
is done. It was good, and by good I mean it took about seven and a half hours. Uh, it's late now, we need to get some food, so I'll see you at the dedicated food location. Game on. Right, Ben, you are a fat waste of space. Can you explain <laughs> why? We can, we've ordered a ridiculous amount of food. Ben, can you tell us what we have, please? Uh, and justify it. 12 pieces of... <laughs> Nice one, thank you. Well, More a food. large one. <laughs> a large popcorn chicken, 12 pieces of boneless chicken. Yeah. Four portions of fries, which is a little bit excessive. <laughs> Four portions of fries. <laughs> the 12 pieces of chicken, that makes sense. I reckon we could do that. Some gravy. Four portions of fries. Because Matt's a Tell me now. Yeah, I did actually the gravy. Gravy's good for dipping in, I reckon. And barbecue beans, which is really good for dipping. We should have had two of those. Give it that bag. That's a nice thing. That would be killing the shot. Four portions of fries. How big are the fries? Uh, the fries are big. Yeah. They're not I'm like pour them over your head. <laughs> they're not like great fries either. Oh, they're not massive food there. But still, that's quite a lot of fries. The chicken's what we're here for. That KFC. Okay. okay, I have not had KFC in a long time. Probably KFC like maybe less than five times in my life. I'm definitely more of a McDonald's man, but I can see the appeal. Obviously, it's a lot higher protein content, so in that respect, it's good. Uh, ben, can you give us a mark out of 10 as far as how confident you are that we're going to finish this food? Town. <laughs> Easy. All the fries as well. Uh, the fries don't ten. Count, you've just said ten. <laughs> All so right. Well, if the fries that's like been documented on video. Like an eight. Okay. And also, you bought an extra thing. Why did you do that? Too thirsty. Hang on. What did you order? You ordered these. You ordered more. Something no, else. no, no. That's part of the thing. You ordered something else. No. Okay. okay. That's, that's it. Yeah. Right. Um. This is a lot of food. I am quite hungry to be fair, but yeah. Let's see what happens. Wish us luck. Five minutes that was so enjoyable, right, Ben? Yeah, that was. There's even a big bad. difference between being able to eat something <laughs> and wanting to eat something. I did not want to eat that many fries, but absolute heroes, uh, we did it. So that's 12 bits of chicken, four portions of fries, and a thing of pop. Is the popcorn chicken like one size? Yeah, isn't it? Is nah, it? That's a large one. You get like a thing of popcorn chicken. A large. That's a lot of food. Um, cool. <laughs> and it's a massive thing of gravy and beans. These sauces to be available pretty good, although we only had, I had like a bit of the garlic mayo. Um, how are you feeling, Ben? Yeah, good. I'm not that bad, I'm not quite full up, but I'm not that bad. You could definitely eat more of the boneless chicken. Eat like mm, another six of those. I found right? that quite hard to eat. I found the fries easier to eat than the boneless chicken. I'm um, the popcorn chicken the hardest to eat. Yeah, cool. This is a cool, this is a cool chat. I'm sure you'll probably enjoy <laughs> Just watching two sweaty weirdos dipping nuggets and gravy that's probably going to run up here. More of this. Um, so, the exciting news is that my next video will almost certainly be in America, which is pretty cool, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But for now, I'm going to wind up. So, see you later, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>